Imagine being born with no eyes, skin, limbs or nervous system. Well, that's what happens to the main character in this anime, Dororo. Now, in today's video, we're going to be answering the question which body parts you can reasonably live without and what medical treatments are there to supplement any of those that are missing. And we're going to use the Dororo anime to help answer this question alongside some real life medical illnesses. Some of you might find these stories distressing. First up, for those of you who haven't seen the Dororo anime, here's a quick synopsis. As Lord Daigo waits for his wife to give birth, he recalls the time he made a pact with the 12 demons in the Hall of Hell to tread the path of evil in exchange for power. When his first son is born, the demons extract their payment. The child is born without limbs, facial features or skin. Subsequently, the baby is abandoned, set adrift in the river and left to its fate. 16 years later, this baby is now a young man, travelling alone wearing prosthetics made for him by a doctor. Whilst hunting a sludge-like demon, he encounters a young petty thief called Dororo, who's been beaten up by a gang who've been cheated out of their goods. The demon attacks and devours the men, but the young man destroys it with blades hidden inside his prosthetic arms. Following the death of the demon, the man's missing skin reappears and a demon statue in the Hall of Hell is split by lightning. Now, Dororo chooses to accompany the man who seems to be unable to see, hear or talk. However, he has excellent swordsman skills, superhuman strength and the ability to detect friendly or unfriendly beings by the colour of their souls. And so starts the epic journey of Dororo and this young man to acquire his missing body parts. So first up, we've got the skin. Now the skin serves multiple functions, from acting as a barrier, from preventing bacteria entering the body, all the way through to regulating your body's temperature through sweat and insulation. Now, could we survive without our skin? Well, there are people out there who are suffering with rare conditions, such as epidermolysis bullosa, where they're lacking a vital protein that helps to hold their skin together. As a result, light touch in such patients can result in both internal and external wounds and blisters, as bad as second or third degree burns, which leave them prone to life-threatening infections. Unfortunately, most sufferers describe a life of pain and mental torment. Fortunately, there have been successful treatments in the form of stem cells and bone marrow transplants, which look to correct the absence of this protein, allowing your skin to behave a bit more normal. So, can you survive without skin? Yes, but are there treatments for such conditions? Fortunately, yes, for this one. So next up we see that he's acquired both his peripheral and central nervous system and I'm assuming this has allowed him to sense touch, pain, pressure and coordination. Now clearly these senses are required for a variety of tasks from fine motor skills that require coordination through to reflexes that protect us from harm. But can we live without them? Well, you might be surprised to hear, but I have many patients coming through who suffer from chronic diseases like diabetes, where they've lost several of their senses. It's not uncommon that I have diabetic patients come through who have wounds on their feet, not knowing how they've gotten them. And all of this is as a result of having uncontrolled sugar levels in their blood. More interestingly, there are some rare cases of people being born with a congenital insensitivity to pain. Now initially, you might think that sounds cool, but imagine a baby chewing through their tongue and not knowing it, or scratching at their eyes to the point that they need to be removed. It's only really when you realise the implications of not experiencing the protective impact of pain that you can appreciate the damage that someone could unknowingly do to themselves. So yes, you could live without your senses, and for those rare conditions, unfortunately, there isn't really a cure. But scientists believe that the secret to managing patients' chronic pain might lie in these rare, exceptional cases. What is this? 
Now obviously we use our legs to walk, run, climb and jump. However, there are many remarkable cases of people thriving despite having amputations. In fact, there are people born with even more limited conditions characterized by the underdevelopment of their limbs, such as Hanhart syndrome. Somehow, amazingly, such people are able to make adaptations to the way they live to live relatively independent lives. On the other hand, for amputees, there are of course prosthetics which are becoming more and more realistic. Now, when they've been integrated with robotics, they can become even more functional, resembling that of a normal limb. But of course, some people prefer not to use prosthetics at all and are quite happy to manage without them. So yes, you can survive without legs, and for those that want to use them, there are prosthetics available. <laughs> Now in this scene we see that Hiyakumaru has regained his sense of hearing as his ears just pop through. Gosh, just being able to hear for the first time must be such a shock. <laughs> Now we are aware of a few different types of congenital deafness. That's why in the UK we have a national screening program of babies. And this is normally done in the first few days after birth to try to detect any problems early so that it doesn't delay a child's language development. But can we survive without hearing? Of course we can. In fact, there are communities of deaf people all around the world who live relatively normal lives. But for argument's sake, what does modern medicine have to offer for those who are deaf? Well, so long as your inner ear apparatus are normal, it can offer quite a lot. We have things like behind the ear hearing aids which help to amplify the sounds in our environment, all the way through to cochlear implants which directly stimulate the hearing apparatus and bypass the eardrum altogether. Now, just to give you some perspective, this is what it sounds like to have the most common form of deafness. Ooh, I'm gonna go and see it again. The play is so good. It's... And this is what a hearing aid can do. It was opening, isn't it great? It sure is. What plays are they showing? I think it'll be the one we saw last year. So here we're seeing Hiyakumara's first attempt at speech, and we have to remember that at this stage he probably has the language level of a newborn, so we're unlikely to hear words or sentences, and more likely just sounds. Remember, it normally takes over a year for a newborn to be able to communicate. And the fact that he wasn't able to make sounds before this tells me that he's just reacquired his voice box. Now, when someone uses the term voice box, what they actually mean are the vocal cords. It's the airflow passing through these vocal cords that creates vibrations and subsequently sounds that allow us to speak with. And much like any fine instrument, it takes us some time to master. <laughs> Now my background's in ear, nose and throat surgery and in some of my major surgeries we would have to actually remove people's vocal cords as a result of cancer. Fortunately however we can retrain our patients to learn to talk again using a voice prosthesis and this is what they sound like. The 10 minutes after I had the valve fitted I was on the phone speaking to all my family. So ultimately can you survive without a voice? Yes, and does modern medicine have an answer in these scenarios? Yes, I've seen it myself. <laughs> okay, so next up we see here that he gets his nose back. Now, interestingly, the external nose serves very little function other than protection of the internal nose and allowing air entry. Whereas the internal nasal cavity is involved in breathing, your sense of smell, taste, as well as your speech. Now, of course, many people around the world lost their sense of smell when they caught COVID. For some people, this was temporary, and for others, this was long-term. And MRI studies of patients affected by COVID show a shrinkage of the olfactory bulb, the part of the brain involved in the perception of smell. And interestingly, in 
long COVID clinics, they're retraining patients' sense of smell by slowly introducing them to the various different types of smell you'll come across, and it's showing great results. So yes, you can live without your nose, and yes, there are prosthetic noses for those who need them, but unfortunately, science hasn't yet created an artificial system that allows you to sense smell. God, that looked painful, and I'm guessing those are artificial vertebral bodies that are making up the spinal column. Now really, the function of the vertebral bodies are to provide support for the trunk, provide attachments for muscles, help to protect the spinal cord, and is also a site for hemopoiesis, or red blood cell production. Now, I'm not familiar with a survivable medical condition where you can survive without the bony parts of your spinal column. Otherwise, you'd be a slug. However, I have seen patients who've sustained fractures to the vertebral bodies in their spinal column and have subsequently had surgery to replace those bony structures. And these devices are useful to help maintain the height and alignment of the spine after a fracture. So can you survive without a vertebral column? I would say no. Can science help if you've lost a few? Definitely. <laughs> Gosh, okay, so here we see Hiyakumaru reclaim his hands only to go on using the blades that he had in his prosthetics. That's likely going to do some damage to his new arms. Now, like before, there are people out there who are born without arms in a condition called holt arom syndrome. This condition mainly affects the upper limbs, causing them to form abnormally. However, it does also have some association with heart problems as well. And much like the other conditions we've spoken about, most patients who are afflicted by this are able to make adaptations with the ways that they live their lives. It's so amazing amazing seeing the resourcefulness of some of these people. However, what does science have to offer for people like this? Well, much like the feet, we have prosthetics that not only resemble that of a normal limb, but also function like one also. They allow patients to perform highly dexterous tasks and are only getting better with their functionality. <laughs> Now ultimately here we see Hiyakumaru regain his sight at the cost of his brother's life. And I feel that this is one of the most heartbreaking aspects of this anime. Not only does Hiyakumaru have to go through the physical pain, but also the mental pain of regaining what was his. But once he regains his sight, he finally becomes a full human being. Now obviously blindness is a severely limiting condition, and if physical changes aren't made to your surrounding environment, it can make it very troublesome. <coughs> Unfortunately, Hyakumaru wasn't ever fully blind as he was able to see the souls of others. But the question is, could you survive without your vision? Well, yes, of course, I'm sure many of you have seen blind people in your life, but probably none as impressive as Ben Underwood, who was able to perform some form of echolocation to be able to see. Now, Ben Underwood had to undergo surgery to remove his eyes as a child due to cancer, only to then turn him into a real-life daredevil. By sending out constant clicking sounds, he was able to map his environment and help to determine the distance of different objects. A bit like how bats see. Now, doctors don't really understand how Ben was able to do this, as he was the only example of someone who had this ability. So, let's say you're blind and you're not Ben Underwood. What does science have to offer? Well, really, it depends on the cause of your blindness. If it's something such as a cataract, an infection or an inflammatory condition, or you've had a problem with your cornea, well, we can perform surgeries to replace your cataract, give you a corneal transplant and treat the underlying condition that's affecting your vision. However, if it's something other than this, for example, affecting the brain or the nerve, there isn't much that we can do for you. So yes, you can survive without your vision. And if you do turn blind through a reversible cause, we have some treatments we can offer you. <laughs> Okay guys, that's all we have time for today. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video as much as I have enjoyed making it. 
Let me know down below which body part you think it would be hardest to live without. Otherwise, I can't recommend enough the Dororo anime. It's a relatively short series and it has a beautiful ending. In the meantime, as always, here's another couple of videos that you might enjoy watching if you've enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.